There was an old man who'd played chess all his life. When he was a young boy, uh, it was said, we have never seen chess played until now. It's all he did. It's all his family did. It's pretty much all the people in this town did. They played chess. And he played and got to a level of worldwide fame that had never been seen before. He got to a point, though, where he started getting old and feeling old. He'd get hurt and take forever to heal. Sometimes his mind would wonder, not because his mind was going away, his mind was sharp as ever, but he started losing the joy, the joy that he'd spent his whole life experiencing, which is the joy of chess. So, in a lot of ways, he retired from the public eye because he wanted to be remembered for his family's sake and for his city's sake. He wanted to be remembered as that brilliant, brilliant chess player. And so he retired back to his hometown. He played chess every day in the town square. And people would go and meet him to play. And people would go to play to see him play. Uh, mothers and fathers would come, bring their chessboard. They'd leave their kids on the edge uh, by the playground where they'd play their kids' games. And they'd all sit down and play chess. And one thing that you might know about chess uh, pieces is that chess pieces talk to you. Uh, when you grab uh, your pawn, for instance, your pawn says, I could move forward to this space. I could take this person to this side or this person to this side. Um, the other players, talk, the other pieces talk to you as well by telling you, I'm coming for you. I'm heading this way. I'm moving to meet and protect my bishop. You might say, yes, of course they talk like that. But they talk like that while they're playing and they talk like that because they want to play a perfect game. But they don't always have to talk like that. They just always have. So the old man was about to win. He knew he was going to win long before the game was over. He was going to move his pawn into the king's row. And once you do that, for instance, in this case, he would exchange his pawn for a queen. And then the game would be over. It would be checkmate. The old man touched the pawn and moved it forward, and the pawn went to talk to him. Except the pawn didn't say anything, because right as the old man went to move, the old man looked to the side, and he watched kids playing hopscotch. And he saw kids playing checkers. He even saw a game of shoots and ladders. And he realized, I've never played shoots and ladders. And past the game of shoots and ladders, he saw a group of kids jumping rope in this intricate fashion. And he thought about how easily he gets hurt now and how his body has changed. And he realized, I'm never going to play jump rope. And that was what was in his mind when he set the pawn piece down. He is never going to play jump rope. And then he glanced down at the pawn, and this is where you look down, and you get the information. The information is, uh, make, it, make me a queen, and the game will be yours. Except with these words echoing in both their minds, I will never play jump rope. The pawn said, make me a king. And the old man, not caring, not even realizing, as he said it, I would like to exchange my pawn for a king, please. And his partner reached over and grabbed the queen and started to swing it over. And the old man said, no, I said a king, please. And his partner, puzzled, puts back the queen and puts the king in place. And the pawn, the pawn became a king. Other people to the left and the right moved their tables closer while continuing to play. One person brought their table almost right up against their table. He was so intent 
Uh, his partner even was completely ignoring their own game because they must see what the master was doing. He hadn't done anything like this. They'd all studied his games since he was a child. They studied his games in school. And as they moved over, one of the opponents of the op opposite uh, playing table moved his pawn into the king's row and thought, within moments I will have replicated the master's move and I'll be learning from him. So he made his pawn a king. More and more people moved their tables closer. The king started to move back towards the center, towards the old man, as if returning to the protection of the rest of the group. His opponent started to harass the king in a kind of a confused manner. The king started angling to the side. And right when the king got angled to the side and couldn't go any further, he was going to be checkmated. The old man looked down at his pawn for what the next move would be. And then he looked at the people right to the next of him and noticed some of their pawns had already become kings. He said, excuse me, would you mind if we all played together? And they looked at him puzzled and he says, could you push your, your board up against ours? And they instantly did. You did what the master told you to do. It was an honor for him to speak to you. And when the next move came, the pawn that became a king moved to their board. Soon all the chess boards of the entire plaza were pushed together. Kind of a, almost a, a maze-like pattern as players moved about them. The kids stopped playing and grabbed their games and moved over. And as the pieces were piling up in the outside of the game, as, as, as pieces were being captured, the old man turned to a young man and said, what game is that you have there? And the young man said, shoots and ladders, sir, because in this town, children were polite to their elders. And the old man says, well, why don't you join us? He says, and the young man says, but I don't know how to play. And the old man says, the pieces will show you how. Go ahead and set your board down, set it against mine. And suddenly the chess pieces began to come out of the chessboard, the ones that have been captured have escaped, and they began to play shoots and ladders, and more games appeared. Chess pieces and checker pieces suddenly were warring on their boards, suddenly getting kicked off, being captured on a checkerboard, and moved on to a backgammon board, and getting captured on a backgammon board might move you on to hopscotch. And as the pieces moved further and further out, the pieces reached the jump ropes. And soon, the pieces were in the children's hands, and they were dancing through the ropes, this maze work, this lattice work, this fury of motion and sound. And to rules only known to the pieces and those children in the ropes, those pieces returned, and they returned to the center of the board. And the old man, when he saw the very first piece come back, he thought to himself, and for the first time smiled while playing chess, the game he's left all his life. He never smiled at a game. He smiled and said, I am playing jump rope for the very first time. And his opponent across from him said, I am seeing chess played as if for the very first time.